Hi there! Feeling a little overwhelmed perhaps? Now in the beginning of a new year or when you are starting new creative projects is the time that a lot of creatives are dealing with overwhelm. I know that from conversations over on Instagram that many are doing so right now. And I thought we would talk about it today. It's something I as a creative coach often help creatives deal with in their projects since overwhelm is so very common. So yeah, I thought we would talk about that today so that I can help you move forward in your creative projects like you want to, calmly and steadily. So yeah, let's get into it, shall we, Alice? sides to dealing with overwhelm. There's the short term to just calm your brain a little bit and then there's the long term so that you don't overwhelm yourself over and over again. And I thought we would start with the short term and do what I often do when I'm feeling overwhelmed. Take a walk in the forest. Here we are in the forest and it's looking absolutely magical. It's such a winter wonderland here right now. Ah, oh, it's amazing. And I come to the forest very regular, regularly since I live so close to it. I come here almost on a daily basis and go for walks to avoid that overwhelm to happen in my day-to-day -day work. But also whenever I'm starting to feel tense or stressed or overwhelmed, I come out here and it always works. Nature is so magical. So if you have a forest or another type of nature close to you, I highly recommend using nature to deal with overwhelm. And overwhelm happens in a couple of different situations. So first there's that stress overwhelm. So when you are feeling that there's too much going on, you have too many things that you have to do and have to finish and maybe short deadlines, then overwhelm happens. But it also happens in the beginning of big projects when we see the amount of work that we need to do to be able to finish the project and it just overwhelms you. So when I have written my novel, for example, it has felt completely overwhelming many times. And also when you get that sense that, okay, I can't do this. <laughs> when when self-doubt comes in and you can't see yourself being able to do something that you want, we often fall into this sense that we have to push ourselves so hard, we have to do so many things because we don't really see that, that we think we can do it. And then we fall into overwhelm for that reason. So there's always that sense of standing in front of a mountain, looking up to the top, and thinking, how am I going to get there? I, I can't see my journey up to this mountain. So th yeah, that's overwhelm. overwhelm on a short-term scale, I suggest you start by just hitting pause. Anything that you have scheduled to do, things that you're like, oh, I have to get this done, try to hit pause on as much as you can, uh, everything if that's possible, and just breathe. Depending on how overwhelmed you are, you might need a longer break or you might just need a long walk in the forest, like I am prone to do and just relaxing, 
you want that tensed up feeling uh, the thing that you're you're trying to hold on you're trying to control everything you want that to relax and you want yourself to soften and feel a bit more open again so when you when you have reached that feeling you can think about okay what is the closest step that i'm at right now not thinking about the mountaintop it's up there it's going to you're going to get there eventually but right now what you need to focus on is just the closest step just the smallest step towards the the path of the mountain and just just see okay this is where i'm at this is what i'm going to focus on and when you when you're there you can think about overwhelm on long term scale and to talk about that let's go back is going to be with us today. She is apparently feeling very cuddly. And so yeah, when we have dealt with our overwhelm short term, we also want to deal with it long term. Because if we don't do that, the risk is that as soon as we get started again, we're just going to overwhelm ourselves again and again and again and again. So yeah, to avoid that, we want to be able to see how am I going to go from where I am now to where I want to be. I call this the route, uh, where you want to go is the direction, and you also need a route to get you there. Uh, just so you can envision, okay, how is it going to happen? Because like we talked about, overwhelm happens when we, when we have all this work that we need to do, but we don't know how to do it, uh, how the, the sort of way there is going to look. We just feel overwhelmed by all that needs to get done. So uh, a route in, in my little world, consists of three levels that is at the top your strategy uh, how you're going to get there essentially so that depends very much on uh, what kind of credit project it is you're doing but yeah it's a strategy and then the second level level is a plan so that is yeah exactly what it sounds like it's a plan how you're going to get there and on the last level there's your daily habits so that is the actual doing the credit work day to day so these three things uh, need to be in place for you to be able to move forward towards your direction. So the first thing when you're feeling overwhelmed is to check in with these three areas. Okay, do I have a strategy? And strategy can sound very like you have to have a super uh, strategic document and everything. I'm going to do this and it's going to lead to this. Um, it doesn't have to be that fancy. Uh, for example, if you're writing uh, say, say you're writing a funny book, for example, <laughs> then you have to have some kind of understanding, okay, how I'm going to try to write this book so that people find it funny. That is a strategy. Uh, so it can be that you're following a method of someone, uh, a comedian, for example, <laughs> um, or someone who has written funny books, or maybe you have come up with your own strategy. Or if we take another example, let's say you want to grow your Instagram, um, then you need to have some kind of strategy in mind how you're going to do that. So it's not just you thinking, okay, I need to grow my Instagram, but you don't know how to go about it. So for example, your strategy might be to collaborate with other Instagrammers so that uh, they can introduce you to their audience, for example, that can be a strategy. Okay, so first, do you have a strategy? And if you don't have a strategy, what can you think about uh, and do so that you are able to go from where you're now to where you want to go? And the second level then, the plan. Uh, do you actually have some kind of plan in which order are you going to do things? What are you going to focus on? Um, and we'll get back to this a little bit. Uh, so yeah, if you don't have a plan, try to think about what, what are you going to do? <laughs> What, what, what is going to be actual, the, the actual doing between 
where we are now and where we want to go. And finally, the habits. Uh, so this is what it all comes back to in the end, the actual day-to-day -day doing creative work. And if you don't have any daily habits to support you to actually do the work, then it's also very hard to envision how it's going to happen. Uh, so if you feel like your habits either aren't there at all, or if you feel that they could be improved to do the specific thing that you're trying to do. For example, I this year to to grow my creative business, I am trying to shift my priorities so that I have more of a habit of being, for example, doing lives on Instagram or doing uh, outreach work, pitching to podcasts, that kind of thing that often have been something that I sort of do as an off afterthought. Now I'm putting it much more in the core focus of my creative work and then it becomes a different habit. Uh, than the ones that I have had. So it can be very simple, like, okay, on Sundays I'm going to do this, uh, or it can be more sophisticated, like, okay, I'm going to prioritize on this first, and then I'm going to do this. Uh, so yeah, just see if you have a habit, and if you don't, and if the habit doesn't work for you, try to change it. The second thing that is also connected to planning is to divide up your work into focus areas. So this is something I do in Four Seasons of Creative Work, my planning guide. Uh, there we set our yearly goals and then move on to identifying focus areas for uh, to reach those goals. So in my journey, for example, when I'm doing uh, my growing my creative business, one focus area, for example, is to build more community. Another focus area is to do outreach work, uh, like pitching the podcasts, for example. Um, so yeah, identify different focus areas that you need uh, to be working on to reach your goal or the end of your project. So yeah, think about, okay, what are the different focus areas that I need to, to work on? and divide them up so that it's not just a mass of work because <laughs> that mass of work is when you start to feel overwhelmed and you can then use your focus areas to divide up the work into different seasons of uh, of the year or or different seasons of your project so you might begin by focusing on one focus area or two fo focus areas and then shift uh, as it progresses so this is something that helps you defeat is overwhelmed by not having everything uh, and, and not know in which end to start and feeling like you have to do everything at once. overwhelm long term is simply to not pile on too much on your plate. So sometimes overwhelm is a sign that we are trying to do too much in too short an amount of time. Maybe you are trying to juggle many different things uh, or you have very short deadlines. So think about, okay, am I really realistic in how much work I can do in what amount of time or am I really pushing myself too hard? So I am always a proponent of the slower journey, uh, the slower pace there, so that you can move forward at a consistent pace and not do this thing where you are working really hard and then get overwhelmed and super tired and have to take a break. Because this, you know the saying of, of slow and steady wins the race. Uh, and I really do believe that that's very true in creative work. And it's also gonna be much more enjoyable than the hustly way. So think about, okay, am I trying to focus on too much at once? Am I trying to do too much in too short amount of time? And can I just space it out a little bit, embrace a little bit of a calmer pace and do one thing at a time? thing that we then come back to is to take it one step at a time. Don't try to do everything at once, that's what we've been talking about. 
And when you have your plan, strategy, habits, when you have your focus areas and you have a little bit of a slower pace, then just focus in on the step where you're at, the current step that you're going to take forward in, in this project or into the new year and focus solely on that. Forget everything else for a moment and just enjoy doing that and enjoying taking the step forward. Everything else can wait and you don't have to worry about the next step. When the next step comes, you focus on that. So yeah, that is what I had to share today about overwhelm. And if you're feeling slightly less overwhelmed, give this video a little like. And if you haven't subscribed already, do so for more tips on moving forward in your creative work and in building a slow and intentional creative life. And I will see you in the next video. Bye!